We'll start off with module 5. We'll be discussing consolidation in module 5. This is the syllabus. So, consolidation is the reduction in volume. This occurs in three stages. First stage is the initial consolidation or the initial compression. Second stage is the primary consolidation and third stage is the secondary consolidation. Okay. Now, initially we have studied that soil consists of three phases. Soil solids, water and air. We have a three phase diagram and all. Okay. Initially when the load is applied, the air particles escape from the soil and this causes the reduction in volume. This process of reduction in volume due to the expulsion of air from the voids is known as initial consolidation or initial compression or simply compression. So, initial compression is the reduction in volume due to the expulsion of air and this compression occurs soon after the application of the load. Soon after the application of the load, immediately the air will be escaping the soil. So, this is initial consolidation. Next stage is primary consolidation. See, initially when the load is applied, the air particles will be escaping the soil and the remaining phases are soil, solids and water. Isn't it? So, when load is again applied, this water will be taking up the load and excess pore water pressure is developed. Okay, and when the water is allowed to go out of the soil, this excess pore water pressure developed is dissipated and this flowing out of water causes the reduction in volume and this reduction in volume is known as primary consolidation. So, this primary consolidation is due to the expulsion of water from the voids and initially when the load is applied it is taken up the, by the water and then the water flows out causing the reduction in volume okay so this is primary consolidation so in this figure you can see that after the removal of air in the initial compression you have only water and soil solids when again load is applied the water takes up the load initially and then when the water is allowed to go out the reduction in volume occurs Okay, slowly the load is transferred to the soil solids and water is expelled out. So this process is known as primary consolidation. Then you have the third stage that is secondary consolidation. Secondary consolidation occurs after the dissipation of the pore water pressure, excess pore water pressure developed. Okay, so even after the dissipation of excess pore water pressure developed, there is a reduction in volume, additional reduction in volume at a, which occurs at a very slow rate and that is known as secondary consolidation. Now, in our discussion, in our further discussions, when I say primary consolidation, I refer to this consolidation. Okay, when I say consolidation, I mean primary consolidation. Okay. Now, this primary consolidation or simply consolidation can be explained with the help of a spring analogy given by Tersagi. We can use an analogy using a spring and a container for explaining the concept of consolidation. So here I have a container. Say the height of the container is 100 mm. It is filled with water and here you have a piston. Piston can be moved up and down and between the piston and the bottom of the container you have a spring. Okay. So here you have water, here you have a spring and you have a valve which is closed. If this valve is open, the water can go out. So initially this is the setup. Now what I do is I apply a load over here. One Newton load is applied over here and the valve is closed so water cannot go out so what happens as i told you in soil the water takes up the load initially so here also the water will take up the load the spring will not take up the load here you can see that ps ps is the load taken by the string spring the load taken by the spring will be zero the water will take up the entire load and when the valve is closed the water cannot go out now what I do is I will be opening this valve. When the valve is opened, the water can go out and the load taken by the water is slowly transferred to the spring. So now after 
the expulsion of water what happens is the load is taken up by the spring and the load on the water is zero now look at the volume the initial condition the height was 100 mm now the height is 90 mm so there is a reduction in volume so this is the concept of consolidation so consolidation can be explained by using a spring analogy and this is the spring analogy okay yeah as i told you initially the weight is about applied here you can see soil solids and water the weight is applied and slowly the water is expelled out and finally the expulsion is over and there is a reduction in volume now if you look at the void ratio in the first case there is a lot of voids in the last case after consolidation the voids are reduced and so the void ratio is also reduced and effective stress is improved when effective stress is improved we can say that the strength of the soil is also improved okay now we will discuss the variation of a void ratio and effective stress or pressure okay now this plot gives the variation of effective stress with the void ratio you'll be getting a curve like this if you plot effective stress and void ratio you'll be getting a curve like this and if you plot log sigma bar and e you'll be getting a straight line like this okay so this shows the variation of void ratio e and sigma now here you can see a sigma e plot initially load is when load is applied we'll be getting the curve from point a to point b and at point b what i do is i un unload the loading given i remove the load which is already given so when i unload i get a curve from b to c okay so this curve b e c corresponds to the unloading now again when i reload i'll be getting curve c f d okay and then again if i continue loading the graph will be obtained point g is obtained so the curve a b is known as virgin compression curve previously loading was not given on that soil so this curve obtained is known as virgin compression curve now the curve b e c this is a curve obtained during unloading that curve is known as expansion curve or swelling curve now the curve c f d this is the curve obtained during reloading this curve is known as recompression curve okay so this is obtained while doing experiment in the lab when we load the soil and then we unload the soil and again we load the soil this curve is obtained okay now we'll study some basic definitions first one is coefficient of compressibility a b it is the decrease in void ratio per unit increase in effective stress or if you plot a curve between sigma bar and e then if you take the slope at a particular point then that slope will give you the coefficient of compressibility at that point okay so a v is equal to here you can see the slope minus d e by d sigma bar or you can write in terms of delta also it is minus delta e by delta sigma bar okay so a v is the slope of the sigma bar e curve or e sigma bar curve okay next term is coefficient of volume change m v m v is defined as the volumetric strain per unit increase in effective stress so we know that volumetric strain is delta v by v not and increase in effective stress is delta sigma bar so we will be getting the equation as mv is equal to minus delta v by delta naught by delta sigma bar or in other terms you can write it like this also and from this equation we can write that mv is equal to av by 1 plus e naught e naught is the initial void ratio okay now the next term is compression index it is a very important term 
compression index is the slope of linear portion of void ratio versus log sigma plot. We have seen that if you plot between log sigma bar and d, you will be getting a straight line. Isn't it? So, the slope of the straight line is nothing but your compression index. The equation is minus delta e by log to the base 10 sigma bar minus sigma bar by sigma naught where sigma bar is the final effective stress and sigma bar naught is the initial effective stress. Okay. So it can be written in this way also here sigma bar naught is the initial effective stress and delta sigma bar is the change in effective stress. So if you add initial effective stress with change in effective stress you will be getting the final effective stress isn't it so i have just written it in this way okay now these values are obtained from consolidation tests if consolidation test values are not available then we can use empirical formula given by peck and tersagi so the empirical formula are this one the only unknown will be what liquid limit if you know the liquid limit for undisturbed soil then compression index cc can be found out using this equation for remoldered soils cc can be obtained using this equation where wl is the liquid limit and liquid limit should be substituted in percentage okay now we'll go move on to the next term fourth one is expansion index or swelling index so here swelling index is obtained from the slope of void ratio and log e curve obtained during re-unloading. Okay. We have seen that we will be obtaining curves for unloading and reloading. So, CE, the swelling index or the expansion index is the slope of E versus log sigma bar during unloading. So, this is the formula and we have the fifth term that is recompression index CR. It is obtained from the slope of the E versus log sigma bar plot obtained during reloading. So that is known as recompression index. So these are the sub basic terms. We will discuss a problem. In a consolidation test, the following results have been obtained. When the load was changed from 50 kN per meter square to 100 kN per meter square, the void ratio changed from 0.7 to 0.65. So here, load is changed from 50 kilonewton per meter square see this 50 kilonewton per meter square the unit corresponds to stress value isn't it so this is the initial stress and this is the final effective stress okay and the void ratio this is 0.7 is the initial point ratio void ratio and 0.65 is the final void ratio so these are the four data given in the question we need to find out the coefficient of volume increase mv and the compression index cc so we first write down the given data these are the given data initial void ratio e naught is equal to 0 0.7 final void ratio e1 is equal to 0.65 initial effective stress sigma bar is equal to 50 kN per meter square sigma is equal to final effective stress sigma bar is equal to 100 kN per meter square and for finding MV, we need the value of AV. So, first we will find out AV. Coefficient of compressibility, AV is equal to minus delta E by delta sigma bar. So, you will be you just substitute the values and you will be getting the answer as 0 0.001 meter square per kilonewton. So, you got the value of AV. Now, we need to find out MV and CC. We know that mv is equal to av by 1 plus e naught. Both the values are known. Just substitute the values. You will be getting the answer as 5.88 into 10 raised to minus 4 kilonewton per, sorry, meter square plus per kilonewton. So, this is the value of mv, coefficient of volume change or modulus of, of volume change. You got the value of mv. The next term is Compression index CC is equal to this is the equation. Just substitute the values. You will be getting the value of CC as 0.166. Okay. Thank you.